Hi, I'm Marlita Marr. This is McTavish, and welcome to Threaded Thistle. Hi, McTavish. I'm losing my mind. About two weeks ago, I came home from college. Indefinitely. Coronavirus has shut down my school's campus, so for the first time in about three years, I am living at home again. It's been an adventure. I spent about the first week and a half home being highly responsible, doing super productive social distancing activities. That quarantine life, though. A few days ago, though, I finally convinced myself to put my super important binge watching aside and venture back into the sewing room. I started digging through my fabric stash looking for any kind of project inspiration, and I found it. Specifically, an unfinished 18th century jacket that I started and obviously abandoned about four years ago. Now, I've been toying with the idea of making more history bounding garments for my wardrobe a lot recently. My aesthetic as a human being is pretty much just an anachronistic period drama character. How do you pronounce anachronistic? Is that correct? Anachronistic, not anachronistic. So instead of turning this jacket into a completely historically accurate garment, I decided to instead change it up a little bit and play with what I'd already done with it to make a really fun 18th century inspired garment that I can wear in everyday life. So without further ado, here is how I made an 18th century bodice for modern wear. This project began, as most great projects do, with a cup of tea or rather multiple cups of tea while I figured out what to do with this strange, unfinished project. Even though I knew I wanted to make a video for this project, it didn't occur to me that that actually required filming until a few hours in, so by the time I turned the cameras on, I'd already sewn boning channels into all of the seams. This boning is incredibly important because it's what's going to give this garment structure despite the fact that I'm not wearing stays underneath it. I used two types of boning for this project, the first being a very nice synthetic whalebone, and the second is a basic cheap plastic one. This cheap plastic boning is not nearly as strong or as sturdy as the synthetic whalebone, but I had a lot of it laying around the house with no project in mind for it, so that's what I used for a majority of the bodice. The synthetic whalebone, which is significantly sturdier, is used in both of the front panels because this is the area that's going to need the most structure. Speaking of these two front panels, these were also additions I made during the first couple hours of sewing. Originally, this jacket was meant to have a stomacher, but I decided to make it into one continuous bodice instead. I make no claims of historical accuracy for this, but then again, historical accuracy was not exactly the point of this project. I have personally never seen an 18th century bodice that has the front in two pieces like this, but I've also never actually looked for one. For the sleeves, I decided to take a severely anachronistic approach. Though I was inspired by examples of fuller sleeves from various portraits of the 18th century, specifically the 1740s and 1750s, I actually ended up using a 1930s pattern for this sleeve. I actually do own a commercial pattern very similar to this one, but I dropped in my own instead because, honestly, I had a lot of time on my hands. Because the sleeve is unlined, I'm finishing off the inside edge with a French seam. Once I finish that seam, it's off to the iron to press it. I burned my sleeve. And I sewed it inside out, so you know, that's what this buddy is for. Hopefully when I sew it back the right way, you won't be able to see the burn.
I restitched the sleeve seam, the right way this time, and luckily it did indeed hide the burn. There, barely noticeable. Now it's time to gather and sew the bottom of the sleeve to the sleeve cuff. I'm machine sewing the inside edges together, and then I'm going to turn the band over the raw edge and hand stitch it to the outside of the sleeve. And now that both of the sleeves are done, here's a look at the current state of my bodice. She is currently sleeveless, but not very much longer. I fitted the sleeves on myself off camera, marking where they need to match up on the arm side before pinning them all to sew. I'm going to sew the bottom and half of the sleeve, and then I'll fit whatever goes over the arm side by hand. This is a hybrid method that I've kind of created over the years but it does have its roots in an 18th century method for setting sleeves, which American Duchess has an amazing blog post for that I'm linking below. Once the bottom of the sleeve has been sewn on, I ease and pin the top of the sleeve over the shoulder strap lining. This is best done on the body to ensure proper fit. I then backstitch the sleeve onto the shoulder straps. This doesn't have to be beautiful because it will be covered in the end, so theoretically it could have been machine sewn. I didn't want to though. Now it's time to work with the fashion fabric of the shoulder strap, meaning it's time to turn up the seam allowances. I'll be honest, my way of doing this might be a little odd. Using a sewing gauge, I mark where the seam allowance is with a series of pins, and then use them to hold the fabric in place while I iron up the edge. This is a method I kind of created myself over the past couple of years, and it might be a little bit insane, but it definitely works. Also, I rarely own Taylor's chalk, so I kind of use pins and pinnable surfaces as a substitute. Eventually, I will order more Taylor's chalk. Eventually. Maybe. Someday. Once done turning up the sides of the straps, I then pin them on to the strap lining and start sewing. And now the neckline is completely done. which means it's time to finish the bottom edge. I'm going to start by making a slit on either side of the center front. This ensures that the bodice lays correctly over my hips and is taken directly from the original pattern, which by the way was an adapted version of the 1770s swallowtail jacket in the book Costume Close-Up. And now we baste, and baste, and baste some more. This little strip I'm cutting out is going to be used to bind the edges of the two slits I've made. The edges of the binding are gonna get turned up using that strange pinning method I showed you earlier and then it's going to get pinned onto the slit. I'm attaching the binding on using a slip stitch, then doing it again on the other side. I was originally going to try and catch both sides of the binding in just one stitch, but surprisingly I actually found that this was faster for me. And then comes turning up the bottom seam allowance. If it seems strange that I did the slits before this, it should. 
For some odd reason, one of the front edges of this bodice had already been finished about four years ago, so I decided to bind the slit on that side first. I did not bind the other side until the rest of the edges had been finished because that would have been insane. I'm being very careful here to catch both sides of my fabric with my needle, but only one or two threads on either side. This is so that I can keep my stitches as minuscule as absolutely possible. I'm using a black thread here, which is almost impossible to see in the end, but I really wanted to make sure you couldn't tell that I'd used a different colored thread for the fabric. Then out comes the basting. And then the bodice is done. Well, mostly. If this was an actual 18th century jacket, I would leave it without any closures because I would pin the front together. But I'm planning on wearing this in the everyday, so now it's time for the final step. Am I going to drive future me absolutely insane by using the tiniest hook and eyes I can find? Yes, I am. And the marking with pins continues. Why don't I own Taylor's shock? That is one of the universe's great mysteries. Because I hate having hooks slide around while I'm sewing them, I'm using a small bit of tape to try and hold it in place during the first few stitches. I think I learned this trick from some Pinterest post once, and I'll be honest, it only works for me part of the time. I continue to do it anyway though, because a little bit of something is better than nothing. And then she's done. For real this time. Closures and all. The only thing left to do was to take it on a little bit of a test run. I stayed in the backyard per social distancing guidelines, but I had a lot of fun being aggressively dramatic with it. Honestly, I think I kind of look like Elizabeth Swan. I think it's the sleeves. That or some 19th century painting of like an 18th century sheep herding peasant. And that's not exactly the vibe I was going for, but you know, it's not a bad vibe to have. So next time I do this, if I do something like this again, which honestly I might do. I have more than one unfinished 18th century jacket shoved in my UFO pile. I think what I would change is I think I would actually go for normal 18th century sleeves next time. You know, kind of complete the vibe. I think I'd add more boning. Kind of straighten out some of the areas where it definitely could use a bit more structure where it's definitely lacking from not having stays in place. And I think it adds some trim. The simplicity of this, kind of the solid color, works really well for my wardrobe. I think it can go with a lot of my clothes. A lot of my clothes actually have kind of this color scheme in them to begin with. So I think not adding anything to it is good for this one. But if I was to make another one, I'm really happy with it, honestly. It's really, really comfortable. It has... a little bit of a problem there. The fashion fabric isn't lined up nearly as well with the lining as I want there, and I could fix that really easily. And I think I will eventually, but I'd say I don't care but I definitely do. The question is just, do I care enough to unpick it and do it over again? Probably. I don't know if this video was helpful or interesting or, or anything really. I'm new to this 
this bodice was definitely an experiment and so is this video but if you enjoyed it if you have any questions any comments concerns feel free to leave a comment below i will be posting here more in the future as i kind of figure this whole thing out i'm always sewing so i always have something to share and i would love to share it with all of you until then bye i guess i don't know how to end this <laughs>